Hello, Hello, we're we're Most Most Charmly. Charmly. Today we're going to talk about the cost of traditional versus digital art. The long and the short of it is, digital art is cheaper to produce and create, basically. The interesting side of this for us is our schooling and our training is all in traditional art forms. Yeah. You know, getting painting under our nails and in our hair (laughs) or finding lead you know, has somehow yeah from your mechanical its, well, pencil, yeah, from your mechanical, <laughs> but it's just burrowed in your forearm. Ugh. These were, or you know, these were a daily affair, and and something that we both can agree on with a smile was the mark of a true artist. Well, things change, and art changes, and we had to change with it. Digital art and its tools are just a new medium of art, like watercolor or pastel, and that's how you need to look at it. Yeah. So. so, to be completely honest, getting into digital art from a t- traditional background was difficult. Uh, but we just had to wrap our heads around the fact that digital art and its tools are just a new medium to learn, you know, for, of art to learn. Yeah. So, like, just like watercolor or oil, pastel, or, you know, whatever you decide Sculpting, to use. Yeah. Anything, paper mache. <laughs> anything. So... Before we get into the price comparisons, let's talk about the negatives and the positives of traditional art and digital art. You know, we're, first of all, we want to say, you know, neither are, are better than the other. They're just, we're just going to discuss it. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah it's a good point. It's just a discussion. Yeah. It's a versus. People, everybody's going to have their opinion on, on what they prefer. And everyone should have their opinion on what they prefer, you know. So, so let's start. So the first con and most important is health and not emotional health, but physical health. So physically traditional art can kill you. (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. happy accidents. No, thank you. No, (laughs) So no, really. So, you know, many artists can attest to major health concerns with traditional art. The solvent, the solvents, the pigments are toxic. So flake white is lead, not good. No. You know, some cons of digital art are eye strain and are, you know, degenerative vision from prolonged sitting in front of a screen, not to mention shoulder and back issues. Yeah. All, all are not good at all. <laughs> no. Some good could be had with traditional art. For example, Persian blue. Yeah, Prussian blue. Pr- Prussian blue. So yeah. you say that. Pr- Prussian. Prussian blue, which is an actual synthetic pigment. Um, is used to treat people who have been contaminated with radioactive cesium and thallium. It works by binding to the men- metals in your digestive tract to keep the body from absorbing them. So let's just say potty time is smurfy. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> A fabulous thing with digital art is um, there's just there's little impact on the environment compared to traditional Mm -hmm. so to dispose of rags and trash from oil painting is considered toxic and needs to be disposed of at a facility facility. yeah they need to deal with it correctly yeah Um, you know an e-waste is a real threat as well but recycling and even even better repurposing uh, tech is far more responsible than throwing the toxic paint and rags away. Yeah. Because honestly and sadly, that's all you can do with those. Is yeah. Just throw them away in the correct place. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now to the now to how much does it cost? Let's yeah. really look at that. Like you know, cost to one or the other. Um, to do this right, we had to think about it realistically from our own perspective. So um, the cost of going from zero to necessities as an artist for either has to be looked at for long term. Um, so we decided on five years, you know, because it sounded good. <laughs> it no, did. No, 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 really, it's truly because a computer is usable for a minimum of five years. So you can, you know, you can have a usable PC for longer than a decade now, you know, and, and it's going to be even more than that. You know, so computers that are older, they're very capable. So, and that's why it's surprising, but most people already have a computer that can do digital art, you know, true, you know, because the, the resources that are necessary to have are in pretty much a lot of computers everyone has. So, yeah, um, we will be focusing on these, this versus discussion with uh, Krita. With Krita, that's going to be a free program. Um, it's open source. 
Um, it's capable of anything a digital artist can really throw at it. And um, its minimum requirements are so minimum. It's amazing Krita is so capable. Um, yeah, Krita's, Krita's minimum requirements are a 64-bit OS and processor, Windows 8.1 or Mac OS 10.13, and Linux, and uh, four gigabytes of RAM. They re- um, they recommend like a, a 64-bit processor, mm-hmm. you know, Windows 10, uh, newest Mac OS, and Linux can run the newest kernel as well. Yeah. So eight gigabytes for Mac and 16 gigabytes RAM for Windows and Linux, and that's that's it. So it's it can really run on a lot of computers, you know, either when you build or a laptop you already have. Mm-hmm. So if you'd like to have something specific that is really portable and affordable. You may want to get a mini PC or an MacBook. M1 yeah. MacBook Air. Yeah. yeah. They're getting more affordable these days. Yeah. It's still a very capable computer, even though it's over two years old. Yeah. So. Yeah. And if it's a, a mini PC, we think um, Minis Forum yeah. mini PC would be great for about 460 US dollars. You could get something that is user upgradable, comes with 32 gigs of RAM, and uh, Windows pre installed. So just yeah. add a Bluetooth mouse and a keyboard for under $40, and there you go, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And finally, the tablet to draw with, um, you have many options. Uh, the two options that you have are a pen tablet or a pen display. So the only really glaring difference is the pen display is a screen that you can draw on. Um, the latter you will need to purchase a monitor for your PC um, that is an added expense, so if you get that. Uh, we, we, we recommend <laughs> the pen display, but if you want a pen tablet, there are quite a lot of those from Wacom, Huion, XP Pen, and Zensel Labs. Zensel Labs is a new but up and coming competitor to Wacom. Um, from what I heard and read, they are actually people from Wacom. Oh, cool. kind of made I didn't their own know that. Little company because they're like, hey, we can do this. Very cool. You know, it's very cool. Yeah, we've heard good things about them, yeah. you know, about the products, but we yeah. haven't used them. Exactly. So we can't say anything yeah. about that. We have a Wacom Intuos Pro and we've used it for many years. Yeah. <laughs> you know, honestly, out of necessity because it wasn't really, it's not our cup of tea. It's not our forte. So uh, we now use the Huion Canvas 24 Pro 4K. Yeah. Um, that brings us to the pen displays. There are so many options out there, and they're all very good in their own right. Um, for cost to performance, okay, for cost to performance, <laughs> we recommend the Huion Canvas 16 Pro. The pen display market is growing, and there are so many to choose from. But please ask yourself what you really need and what you really want to do with it. Food, yeah, that'll right? that'll guide you to even what you want to do as a digital artist. Yeah, you know, as an artist, just digitally. Yeah, just, you know, it really will. So, yeah. So, three D modeling. Yes. yes. Exactly. Right. Illustration. Yes. yes. <laughs> Animation. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, that's good because you know you can do it all if you really want to. Yeah. So. Well, that's good. You know. It, it, Oh, one more thing. Uh, an external storage device is a great idea. You're going to need one of those no matter what you do, right? Yes. Um, yeah. So, and, and nowadays, you know, storage is cheaper than ever. So you can get a four terabyte, you know, for under $100. So please be sure to back up your work digitally. Um, it can save you a lot of heartache, you know, in the long run. So please save it on an external hard drive. Yeah. So, right? Yes. With all the digital... Su- stuff out of the way let's talk about traditional artistic necessities and we're talking about oil paints yeah we have yeah. chosen oil paints as the traditional medium yeah let's start with uh what you will be painting on yeah canvas <laughs> obvious um you should get something that is going to handle alkyds, solvents and lacquers so it should be strong it's got to be able to handle all that and really you know it needs to be a strong canvas. Um, the canvas we would we use and would recommend is the Fredericks Canvas 16 by 20. Um, uh, it's the red label um, and it costs thirty-seven dollars. U.S. dollars, yes. Yes, they get U.S. dollars, <laughs> not <laughs> dollar dues, dollars. <laughs> um, uh, and an easel would be recommended for sure if you're going to paint for about five years, like we started. 
you know, before, then, then you really have to get something that will last, you know, and it really needs to be good. So the one I use the most is the Maybef Lyre, Layer, L-Y-R-E, Layer, Liar, Liar, <laughs> liar thank you, uh, Easel M11. Um, it's lasted me, honestly, seriously, over 20 years, and it still seems completely brand new. I've even done modifications on it, and it's absolutely as good as new. Um, there's a bigger one I have for the big stuff. Um, that is going to be the Maybef, Maybef Artist Studio Easel. Um, honestly, this is the jungle gym of easels. Uh, you could seriously... Oh, yeah, the, the M11, the Maybef oh. Liar M11 costs like 300 oh, yeah. US dollars. You're right. Or the the jungle gym one, yeah, the the big artist studio one. That's yeah, the, that's the big one. <laughs> that you can do chin ups on it. <laughs> yeah, for real. That's four fifty. Yeah, you know, US dollars. sometimes four twenty. You know, um, yeah. you know, if you could get them on sale, it would be the best. So, yeah. Now under brushes, uh, and paint, and paint. Right? <laughs> yeah, we need those for sure. Okay, this is where it's gonna get a little controversial, okay? Uh, the quality of your paint and brushes affect the quality of your painting. Now, this is where it's serious. Your tools do not make you a better artist, but they can make your art a lot better. Yeah. Which is a weird argument, but okay. Uh, now, there are some people that's going to differ with this opinion. We have had many a discussion surrounding this topic with people. <laughs> but if you were to use brushes and pigments that the masters used to use and make, using such a quality would change the quality of your painting. For example, a brush that is modeled after a master's type of brush made from squirrel hair, which they trapped themselves, okay, would be a Raphael squirrel quill mop brush. A number four is what would be totally feasible and usable. Well, guess what? That's $120 for one brush, okay? Or a number eight, which is kind of like, you know, the all-in-one brush that you're gonna want. You're gonna want a few of those, right? So a number eight, you know, squirrel hair mop is $200 for one brush. So that is a lot of money for something that would be historically correctish. Uh, for the modern age of art. So the same with the pigments and binders, by the way. Oof. To make your own pigments, to get the quality of pigments necessary. I mean, just to make flake white, just to actually get the lead to actually create that pigment. Super toxic, super serious. So here we go. <clears throat> the paint and brushes that are, you know, more realistic price and the ones we recommend to use, which is ones I use, um, would be better for our personal reference because these are the ones we really recommend. We can speak for this. So, um, first, the brush sets, you know, we would ask about 10 brushes would be good. So, you're gonna need 10 brushes. Um, here we go. Uh, first brush. <laughs> first brush. <Okay. laughs> first set of the brushes is gonna be five silver hog hair brushes, okay? Gotta use the natural hair because it's actually, they're very good and they're gonna last you a long time. One long handled number five is twenty dollars. Okay, two long handled number six filberts are forty dollars. Now, these are hog hair, so it's worth the money. One long handled number ten filbert is twenty eight dollars. And finally, one long handled number sixteen, which is seventy dollars. Now, the long handled number fourteen hog hair. Might, you might say, oh my God, that's seriously, seriously a lot of money. Well, when you're actually doing underpaintings, you need something that's kind of like your, your, your mop, basically. You're gonna need some large blocks of colors. You're gonna actually just lay that down and you're gonna need that for your underpainting. It's faster, it's easier, it's gonna save you a lot of time. So it is worth the money in the long run. Okay, now it's for the soft brushes. You know, the ones that are really nice and soft, seriously. Um, I use Da Vinci Black Sable brushes. Okay, so we're gonna start off with these. We got five left, because it's a set of 10. Two Filbert long haired number twos, $40. Long handle number number twos. What did I say? Long, long hair. hair. Long hair? <laughs> I say that. They're not long hair. <laughs> okay. They're long handled. So two Filbert long handled number twos. Okay, $40, right? These are the Black Sables, yeah. Okay, two Filbert long handled number sixes. $50. That's a total of those two. Two Filbert long handled number 10s, $76. 
These are black sable brushes, but they're worth it. They're going to last and you're going to really use them and you're going to use them really well. Okay, we can't forget oh, the, the one oh, filbert I, I, long I, I handle number one. 16. There it is. Which is $60. Yes, and that's a good one too. Going to need one like that, okay? Don't forget these things. Can't forget the blending brushes, oh, you know. One oval blender. $30. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now for the oil paint. Here we go. Um, it is worth your while to get paint that has a good pigment to binder ratio. What that means is that you're not going to have a lot of additives and a lot of filler. There's a lot of paints out there that were student grade or, you know, hobbyist grade, pro grade. You're basically dealing with one thing. How much filler are they putting in to your paint, you know, opposed to pigment? It's kind of like, I don't want nitrates in my turkey. Thank you. So now, <laughs> so I don't same, want thing filler, with same thing with paint. <laughs> I don't want filler in my deli meats. I don't want filler in my pigments or my paint. That's what we're dealing with. Okay, now that's out of the way. Um, the paint that I use and I prefer and highly recommend, okay, is M. Graham and Company oil paints. Um, their consistency of paint is amazing. Um, you get an exquisite product that is made with care because trust me they really give a what's it over what kind of paint they're making and the quality of paint so it's a big deal for them trust me um, and we're can, not sponsored by not any of sponsored this, at all. by the way None of us are, but please we wish we were I wish right anyway, <laughs> sorry um, you can get started for a set for a hundred dollars that will last you honestly and that's your basic set so it's gonna give you some pigments that are just your basic pigment so your basic palette right um, and it, that is going to cost $100, but honestly, it's going to be about four to five paintings because they're small tubes, okay? These tubes are 37 millimeters. That is about 10 tablespoons of paint, okay? There's more sugar in the average chocolate chip cookie recipe than there is paint in these tubes, okay? <laughs> so let's really put that in perspective. So you're going to want larger tubes. They make 150 milliliters. Go for those because they're going to really, really last. Okay. Um, and that's about 0.64 cups of paint. So that's a lot more. So 150 milliliters is the way to go. Trust me. Okay. These are your basics we recommend. Okay. It's going to be fast, but it's going to be good. Here comes the paints. Here we go. 150 milliliter alizarin crimson artist oil. It's semi transparent. It's excellent. $58. 150 milliliters of burnt sienna artist oil, $43. 150 milliliter burnt umber artist oil, $43. 150 milliliter cadmium red artist oil, $114. Oof. Toxic paint. 150 milliliters cadmium yellow artist oil, $114. Not healthy. 150 milliliter cobalt blue artist oil, $114. Not healthy either. 150 don't milliliters. Don't be eating them, guys. Don't eat this one. Not at all. No. <laughs> 150 milliliter Thalo Blue Artist Oil. That's $59. 150 milliliter Thalo Green Artist Oil. $59. 150 milliliter Yellow Ochre Artist Oil. $43. 150 milliliter Titanium White Artist Oil, which is $34. The titanium white is like room temperature cream cheese. It is absolutely <laughs> one of the best whites I've ever used. It's amazing. Okay. Okay. Now, back to it. Finally done with painting and on to lighting. Okay, mm -hmm. something that is, you know, mobile and uh, you can produce accurate light temperatures. That's very important to have. So we recommend uh, one GVM two-pack LED video lighting kits, which are 170 US dollars. Yeah. Um, you know, so with all that traditional art supplies tallied up, it's a good idea to know that the paint and some of the brushes you are, you know, that you have are disposable. You will have to resupply almost every four to six months. Um, and don't forget cleaning supplies, thinner and extenders. So let's add a hundred dollars or so to the traditional art bill. So yeah, honestly, uh, we think, you know, we think and we know that we don't have to go any further. Uh, it's quite obvious that digital art is much cheaper in the long run and much healthier. 
So we really hope this helps you out because we made this change, you know, a few years ago and it really was hard. Oh, very hard for us. <laughs> you know, and very slow going. Oh, yes. But the digital art tools, you know, they're just tools. It's a new medium to explore, honestly. And you just take the time and, you know, you learn how to use a new tool, basically. You're not going to regret it. Yeah. So that's at least our opinion on yeah. this, right? There, yeah, and there, there's some other things, you know, uh, we'd like to mention that like with yeah. the cost of traditional art, whether you're doing illustration or painting, you're always going to be canvas or paper hungry. So mm. you'll be in constant need to get more of whatever tools you'll need. A funny thing with, di with digital, you know, there's no worry about needing paint. So the amount of colors are infinite with digital art and, you know, brushes are something mm. that are more affordable too digitally. And you can also finagle and make your own make them, yeah. in whatever program you There's choose to use. Free ones too. Yeah. So it's it's really kind of neat that way. Yeah. So the funny thing, you know, that you will need regardless of using digital or traditional art is an external hard drive. You'll always have to either photograph or film whatever art you've made if you want to get it out there and share it with the world. Yeah. So the best thing about doing art digitally is you don't have to worry about, you know, scanning or physically photographing your art. And, and that's not a bad thing to do, but we used to do that and we, we had to buy a, a good scanner and we used to have to think about all of those tools. Yeah, exactly. And it was kind of difficult if you have an awkward size, you know, canvas or paper, paper or, or, anything, or yeah. anything and not get a glare. So it's, it's, you know, completely, well, yeah, you know, if you actually go through that process, you're very aware of how difficult it is to truly and accurately reproduce your artwork. Yeah. And, and it, it's it's quite a chore in itself. So. so when you work on things digitally, you can immediately upload and save your work. It, it takes out that middle step, which is kind mm -hmm. of nice. And it's much more cost effective as well. Yeah. So that's a big deal. So just wanted to mention those things yeah. and give yeah. you a perspective. We didn't share with, with you with uh, other, other forms of, you know, art with that like other you know yeah other materials stuff, yeah, like acrylic know, forms, or yeah. or gouache or, yeah. or watercolor but it's uh, ultimately the same thing because of that that need that constant you know a necessity to replenish your supplies so it's almost like okay in the long run you are needing paper like you said you are going to need canvases i mean you yeah, know, i was very paper with, hungry <laughs> oh, well, yeah but you gotta basically everything of course but that's, and didn't that's include, natural you didn't include a palette oh a palette you think about oh, that my gosh, too i forgot about even disposable palettes yeah. or making your own glass palette which is recommended as well so and there's plenty of youtube stuff on that you just buy you can make yeah. one too and we we were discussing you know the the paint that we discussed is mostly toxic but yeah. that was actually what we you well, know sort I use. of used no, that so is what I use, yeah. and there are t so many good options out there for oil um oil based paint that are water soluble yeah there's soluble. those hybrids now that are actually yeah. water soluble which is amazing because that's a molecular thing where they've actually been able to create a uh, actual oil paint that is water soluble that doesn't make sense because that's oil and water how does that work yeah, it's it's but amazing it does. <laughs> so yeah you know and there's a lot of artists that are actually very well known that that's what they use yeah because it's just water cleanup so yeah. So we have so many things we could discuss that, you know, if you're interested in hearing two people who are, you know, uh, brought up on traditional art yeah, and you want to hear more, we could we could talk for more years. ages about that. Yeah. So if you'd like to hear about here. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to hear about us talking about that, let us, let know. us know in the comments. Yeah, exactly. Please. We do have a lot of knowledge about what happens with the art world and all the different facets, <laughs> especially in the digital art world. So, here we go. Moss, Moss Charlie, Charlie out. out. <laughs> here we go. Like and subscribe too. Yeah. There Happy arting. <laughs>